Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. By the time you're watching this, if you celebrate Christmas, it's Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas to those of you. I don't know about you guys, I'm not a Christmas person. My depression worsens dramatically in this period of time. I'm a New Year's person, but even that's canceled, so things are great. But I hope that at least we can appreciate my effort to look Christmassy with eyeshadow and sugar cookie earrings because that is it. That is the end of the effort I'm putting in <laughs> for this day. So because like I said, the depression is very big today, I wanted to talk about something silly as opposed to murder or other very upsetting content because if you're anything like me and you're already sad or already not in a good place, let's just breathe a second. So naturally, I wanted to look at something stupid, so first place we go to, Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan has always had very troubling stances, in my opinion, in regards to many, many things. I find a lot of their stances either extreme or like esoteric, but not in a good way. So here we have an article that says, well, 84% of people cheating on their partners right now say they do it for self-care. Like no, God! No, God, please, no! Now, this is one of the things that really bothers me about the, I don't want to say normalization, there should be a better term, but I can't really think of it. But you know when a term becomes popular, for example, the term gaslighting, a lot of people use the term rather liberally and sometimes not even correctly because they think they know what it means or because it's a very trendy term to use. And I think self-care is a bit like that. I think all of us have scrolled on Instagram and there will be something called like, like self-care tips and you're like oh okay like what are they and then it's like some bullshit that is just very basic and doesn't really qualify actually as self-care does that make sense so when i saw this i was like oh god like they took a popular term they're turning it into an excuse to do something that they shouldn't be doing one woman writes dirty talk in coconut oil can make you survive a lonely quarantine but i'm not here to only survive i'm here to thrive and my pussy is too. I'm really starting to regret my existence already. In today's episode of how people are coping during a global pandemic, Ashley Madison, a dating site marketed to those who are married or in relationships, has unveiled some uh, interesting stats about cheating in these times. For starters, you may be surprised to find that the pandemic has not hindered the desire or ability to cheat. It's fueled it. Well, there was a joke at the beginning of the pandemic that I'm but I think my family members found on Facebook multiple times that was just like, by the end of the pandemic, we'll have lots of babies and lots of divorces in the same way. It's like, by the end of the pandemic, we'll have a lot of people who now learned how to cook and a lot of alcoholics. So, I mean, everything is exacerbated during the pandemic. Let's just put it that way. I'm not gonna go too deep into what I think about the Ashley Madison website because honestly, other people's relationships, none of my business don't care. But I also think we need to differentiate between couples who may be open, may be polyamorous, and mind you, even in polyamorous couples have their rules. So that's not to say that, you know, so they can just do whatever, but let's say there are modalities of couplehood where cheating is allowed because it's they're open about it and it's something that's okay to them like like swingers and stuff like that i just don't tend to think that a lot of people on ashley madison are actually open with their partners about these things and when i talk about relationships here i'm talking about the typical monogamous relationship where you two are together and going outside of that is going outside of what you both are comfortable with, or one of you is comfortable with, I guess. Ashley Madison's Love Beyond Lockdown survey, lockdown has not put an end to affairs. Cheaters are merely adapting their current methods while also preparing for future affairs when less restrictions are in place. One Ashley Madison user recently told Cosmopolitan that because of the current circumstances, she's had to take things exclusively virtual, sometimes while her husband is still in the house. Then there's a whole other element the survey reported on, self-care during these blah times. According to the data, 84% of those surveyed believe infidelity has been a reliable form of self-care during the pandemic, and 66% of Ashley Madison users who have experienced negative emotions this year say the affairs have improved their overall mood. <sighs> I just felt like my entire soul deflate. The reason that I think this is bullshit mainly is that you can take anything and rename it with something more positive to try and make it seem 
like it's a good gesture. So in this specific example, cheating is something that has a negative connotation because most of the time it includes someone's feelings being hurt, families being torn apart, a whole slew of just negative things, right? But if instead of calling it cheating, you say, oh, this is self-care, then suddenly the connotation switches up because it's like, oh, this is you taking care of yourself. This is you prioritizing yourself. And it kind of ignores or tries to make you forget the fact that there's another person in said relationship who will be paying the consequences of your self-care. For them, that won't be self-care. For them, that'll simply be you were cheating and you wanted to convince yourself that you were doing something good for yourself. In a way, I think it's just mental gymnastics, to be honest. And of course, people would say that they feel happier because you now have a full new source of attention who probably makes you feel validated, who probably gives you an ego boost. So of course it's gonna feel good probably just initially and then it'll slowly stop. But just because it makes you feel good, it doesn't mean it's good for you or good for you know your couple generally. So while you may consider self-care to be a 30 minute YouTube yoga class, a new sourdough recipe, or maybe even a quick little walk outside for fresh air, for a lot of these users, cheating has been their escape. Let's underline the term escape. This is escapism. And frankly, as much as I don't relate to this and I don't condone this, I think everyone this year has wanted to escape in some way through various methods. I think everyone has wanted to, in a way, kind of forget what reality is like. Sorry, my dog's drinking. But this is just too much. Like for Alexa41, her affairs have motivated her to stay physically fit. And we know by now, physical fitness equals feel-good endorphins. Knowing that another man is going to be seeing me naked is a great motivation to keep fit, keep getting my nails done, keep up with my bikini wax, etc. Those are little things that I probably would have cut out during the pandemic, but I want to look good for my lover, and in turn, it makes me feel better about myself. She continues, knowing that you're turning someone on physically and emotionally is a great ego boost, especially in a time where people are feeling pretty bad about themselves and about the state of the world. So this is also where I get slightly pissed off because it's like, look, Alexa, if you want to work out and feel good and whatever the fuck you need to do for your lover boy, whatever, fine. But also, doing stupid shit in the middle of a pandemic, everyone has their own perspective about this. As for me, since the beginning of this time, I think since March, really, I stopped getting my nails done, stopped going to the hairdresser, stopped going pretty much anywhere that wasn't the grocery store. And now I've stopped doing that too and just get delivered. So, and even some of my family members still would go and get their hair done or get their nails done. And I'd really, really urge them to reconsider because as much as those are good things for self-care and for self-appreciation, there are methods that you can do that at home. Like I started wearing press on nails and I'm probably gonna continue even after the pandemic because frankly, I find them better. Anything that you might do you know, for your hair, like getting it dyed and stuff like that might be more complicated, but you can choose to do a hair mask or something and stay in instead of going out and putting yourself and others at risk. But I think the, the cherry on top of this whole pile of shit really is that it's being done in the name of cheating on your relationship which somehow makes it a lot more insulting because it's like you're doing all of this in the middle of a time where people should really be careful about who they're in contact with and being in contact with as few people as possible and yet here you are. Most importantly, Alexa says that talking with men outside of her marriage is something to look forward to. With so much uncertainty in the world, not knowing when this pandemic will end, when things will go back to quote unquote normal, it's nice to have something consistent that you can still enjoy. So much of life has been canceled lately. It's nice to have something you can rely on, she says. Okay, I'm sorry, but this is genuinely funny because you have a whole ass partner that lives probably in the same home as you that you can rely on, that has invested time and care into you, so like, they're, they've been reliable, but you're gonna pick someone outside of the marriage who may very well be married, who probably won't be a long-term thing realistically. You, you choose that as reliable as opposed to like a relationship that has definitely been more long-term than the cheating. The cognitive dissonance truly is amazing. And I really think it's sad because the bottom line is that these people are trying to get ego boosts, escape, 
just try to feel something positive because this year has been such a mess. So it's sad, but at the same time, it's like you have to find healthier ways. You have to find healthier ways or you have to make an arrangement with your partner to make it okay that you see other men or do whatever. But it's it's just sad, but full of mental gymnastics. Nikki, 30, another Ashley Madison user who has found cheating to be a much needed form of self-care these past few months, primarily for the orgasms. Life in the pandemic requires doing all things necessary to survive, this means we need to level up our self-care. Sex is synonymous with self-care, and I'm not sexually fulfilled by my partner. She continues, to deny my mind and body that authentic release would be the opposite of self-care, and I know I deserve better. We all do. Dirty talk and coconut oil can make you survive a lonely quarantine, but I'm not here only to survive, I'm here to thrive. And my pussy is too. I don't know what this relationship is all about, but it's funny to me that the solution so many times that people seem to find for an unfulfilled sex life or any kind of unfulfillment with their partner is to seek outside of that partner. And it's like, have the difficult conversation. If you actually care about the relationship, and like I said, if it's a monogamous traditional relationship, if you actually care about that relationship, you talk to your partner and say, listen, I think we need to spice things up or I would like to improve certain aspects of this or here are certain things that I like versus things I don't like. These are inevitably uncomfortable conversations to have, but it's wild to me that people would rather just go find someone else knowing full well that when and if their partner finds out, they're going to be devastated over something that could have very easily been fixed. You know what I mean? So like, I think that's also what's like gross about it is that like, you're worried about your self care. And I do think we should put ourselves first in terms of taking care of ourselves so we can take care of others. But this isn't self care. This is just selfish. This is irresponsible, immature, just a whole level of frankly delusion to call it self care, in my opinion, considering it's cheating. If then we were going to talk about sex as self care, that would be a different conversation to be had. But here it's intricately related and cannot be disconnected from the fact that this sex is in a way corrupt because it is lied about or in secret unless, like I said, it is an open relationship, so on and so forth, but it doesn't seem to be in these cases. Anyway, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think this is really self-care or do you think these people are deluding themselves or trying to kind of find a way to absolve themselves from any kind of responsibility? Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. And let's get right into the fan art.